We're ready. So let's start our uh, community call and ask me anything session with our uh, guest speaker, Patricio, uh, from the POAP project, which is super interesting. The last two weeks, we uh, had conversations about NFTs, and it, it makes all the sense to have uh, Patricio with us to talk about POAPs, which were super cool before NFTs were so trendy. Now they're even more cool because NFTs. And uh, yeah, and we have uh, we have a very aligned purpose here uh, with POAP, Bright ID and POAP. We are both working on uh, the unique accounts, which I think uh, POAP has a part in it. We, uh, we also uh, work on it and it's super interesting to uh, have Patricio with us. Uh, I'm gonna uh, give the stage to Patricio uh, to give us an introduction into co-op and what it is for the folks who might not necessarily know what it is. And then uh, let's start asking questions and have an interesting conversation. Patricio, please. Hello everyone. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Um, this is not like any other call because um, Bright ID it's likely the project in the whole ecosystem that has the most alignment with ours. Uh, so, so to explain that, um, it's good to make a quick intro about what POAP is. I mean, still assuming that most of you already have POAPs, so so I won't go too basic on it. But um, the proof of attendance protocol makes really easy for event organizers to give tokens to the people that attend their events. So every participant starts their collections and builds them by attending events that use POAP and collect the stickers. And once they have built a nice set of different events, that particular collection, it's a somewhat accurate representation of their humanness. Uh, the existence of a collection of POAPs um, somewhat loosely represents that a human has done certain things. So for example, in this call, and, and this is important to mention for, for those of you that you are not regulars, in, in this call, um, you are getting a private message from Carlos in the Zoom chat. So be be on the lookout for it. And, and that link that you will get from him will entitle you to claim a non-fungible token that represents that you've been part of this, of this call. Um, some people consider that um, interesting enough for it to be um, reasonable and, and sense-making on its own purpose, just collecting a single token that proves that you were here. But that's not why we are doing this. We are doing this because we have a vision of this world where you can reliably prove that you are a human without disclosing any piece of personal identifiable information like your full name or your ID or your password number. Um, we are running an experiment. We don't believe that we have found uh, a safe way to achieve that. But the experiment is going well because since we started in late 2018 until today, we have validated many, many premises. And, and it's good to explain how we started because um, it's, it, it's not your run of the mill project. Um, and in Ethereum, anything it's run of your mill projects, unless you're running an ICO. If you're running on a typical ICO, maybe those were run of the mill, but those aren't longer existing. So um, I, I joined the Ethereum space full time in 2015. For the first two years, I spent all my time mostly learning because the tech was too hard. The social implications were really hard. Um, and, and it took me a long time to understand what this technology could be used for and, and what it should be using for, it shouldn't be used, used for too. I learned this idea that um, decentralized consensus, it's so expensive and complex. When I say decentralized consensus, I'm mainly thinking on Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, decentralized consensus, it's so expensive and complex that shouldn't be used for anything that doesn't really requires it. 
if what you are doing could be done by using any other legacy tech, it's likely better to do that. So in 18, um, I wanted to use this technology for something useful, this technology being Ethereum. So I was a solution in the looking for a problem, which is normally a bad thing. Um, unless you're running an experiment, if you are running an experiment, that might be um, better accepted because um, it can happen that um, by shopping around your solution, you do find a problem that your solution is the best to resolve. So in 18, um, I, was, I was becoming an Ethereum expert. I knew what Ethereum could do superficially. And I knew about NFTs that were some sort of new thing in, in 2017. Um, someone has their microphone on. And, and it's, it's fine now. Thank you. Um, I, I, I had this very nice and nifty solution on my hands that were Ethereum, NFTs, and, and some other techs. Nobody was using it for anything, we have to admit. In 2017, Ethereum wasn't being used for anything. Um, so like, like you didn't have real depth with users the way we do have today. Maybe you had some people doing things. We had tokens, but dApps as we know them today, like you have Aave, Compound, uh, CryptoKitties, or whatever, they didn't exist um, um, sustainably. Like they may have spikes. So I thought um, in, in those years already, uh, for a square, the social application where you got stickers when you went to places, it was already down. And, and large communities were extremely upset because they've been collecting their tokens and, and they couldn't enjoy their collections any longer because for a square couldn't find a sustainable business. They couldn't find a way to monetize their, uh, their, their platform. So they went down and, and eventually they just spun off part of the company. And I thought, uh, well, this NFT technology, it's a real tool for solving this thing of giving people true ownership, legit real ownership of their digital asset, as long as they are a sticker, which is what Foursquare was. Uh, for those of you that might not know or remember what Foursquare was, Around 2010, Foursquare was like Facebook. It was some sort of Facebook where you had your friends, but the way you made friends was much like you do it in Bright ID. You interacted with people and, and that people, unlike Bright ID where it's basically main of the connections, they also shared the places they attended and they got stickers for doing so. But it wasn't permissionless. Um, you had to have us, you have to sign up an account with a company. You had to sign a contract uh, for using the, the product. That contract had endless clauses and caveats and things you couldn't do. And also for issuing these stickers, uh, you needed to seek permission for the company. So I thought with some friends, um, we could use the technology for doing a more decentralized for a square platform which is something that it's well known that has product market fit. It was something people wanted. People want to collect things. It apparently is ingrained on our human nature. Not in all of us, but it's very common that people like to collect things. It's something that spans far and wide cultures, uh, societies, habits. Rich people collect things. Poor people collect things. Educated people collect things. Uneducated people collect things. So I thought, why don't we make a system where you can collect um, a single proof that you've been somewhere and let just people do whatever they want with them. So we deployed a very primitive version of the ERC721 standard, the NFT standard. Um, I wish I knew what I know now about that standard. I wouldn't have used it, but now it's somewhat too late. And we have started running these experiments mostly on the Ethereum community. And, and the main reason why we do this on the Ethereum community back in those days, it was because the technology was so rough. There were so many sharp corners that it was 
completely foolish to think that this could be used by non-Ethereum people. So we studied on a hackathon. Um, I assembled a team of a couple of friends, more than a couple of friends, actually a good bunch of friends. Um, we spent um, lots of resources and time on brainstorming the idea. Um, this wasn't a rush thing at all. It was, it was carefully planned. And we launched the first version of PowUp. This is already February 2019, mainly two years ago, approximately. And it went better than expected. Um, the product we managed to build, as rough as it was, it worked. It was deployed on the Ethereum mainnet. And, and the best thing of all, uh, people like it. It's hard to build an app that people can understand and start liking it. And, and so we, we started building it still with the vision of just experimenting with it. Um, shortly after, when, when things are starting to look brighter and nicer for us because people validated, validated the idea, more and more, we got feedback about how well this could work for building anti-civil resistance, anti-civil anti attacks um, mechanisms. And we found these things that I mentioned before. Um, let's say that you are a charity and you want to educate people on some certain technology and for educating that people in some certain technology, you want to provide an incentive. Let's say $100 for each person that takes this course. It is quite hard, if not impossible, to execute such an incentive mechanism, giving money uh, in exchange of something without um, a nice source of humanhood. So we got very nice feedback about that. Um, I think not too much time after we learned about Bright ID, um, Bright ID had a different approach to ours because Bright ID has put together a nice white paper, has made a much more academic um, a thought process than ours. Um, we were just building something to see how it goes. So, so having some academic rigor has validated our idea because the way Bright ID explains that if you build a network with some guarantees and you establish some procedures, you can have somewhat reliable. And when I say reliable, that's on the eye of the observer, that, that part of one of the nicest things of this. Everything POAP does, and I think this applies to everything Bright ID does, is open source for anyone to see. It's a community asset. So when I say we build somewhat reliable identities, it's reliability, it's a spectrum that you decide to measure on your own reality. So I can say in the reality I live in, a bright ID is a somewhat trust, a, a bright ID validated identity, it's a somewhat, somewhat uh, trustful um, identity. Same as, as with POA, but I don't need to impose my way. I'm not like, like this, this decentralized technology systems aren't like a state level ID systems where the state using the government force um, imposes what they consider it's a reliable ID. That can be holding an ID card with a picture, a credit card, whatever. So these experiments keep going on. Um, we start getting more input from the Ethereum community and start making the product um, more feature rich and, and safer to use and more comfortable to use. And this is again, when we depart from um, Bright ID values, although we want to achieve the same thing, we do different compromises. Um, unlike Bright ID, we are really relaxed on purism in the blockchain sense. Um, we do have lots of centralized points of um, management 
um, our contracts have admin keys. Um, we control a backend server that has all the metadata for the POWAPs because on the network, on the actual blockchain, POWAP only stores a little piece of data. Unlike BrightID, where if you have the knowledge, you can query the whole network and access mostly all the information. So we make a very different set of, um, of compromises. And I like that because I think that makes a combination of Bright ID and POAP much more valuable than any of us alone. Um, so, so these compromises we've done in some cases have gone too far regarding some values. But again, anyone is um, allowed and welcome to build their own identi identifying personal identifying procedure uh, as they wish. So, so I think um, this is a somewhat basic presentation of what POAP does in the context of, um, uh, of identity. Um, but something worth mentioning as well is that we offer many features for things that aren't straight related to identity. And that's why our footprint and our focus in identity it's somewhat loose. Uh, we aren't thinking much on, on, on POAP as an identity solution at this stage because we, for being an identity solution or for being any solution, we need a much larger network. Um, we would believe that if POAP doesn't grow much larger, then it wasn't a success in the way we want it to be. So for now we are again, allowing ourselves to, to have many loose points where we might not be a, a high quality solution in exchange of maybe having a larger network or applications in different circles. Like, like these days, we have lots of users on the collectibles space, the NFT collectibles space, and they get hundreds of, of POAPs because they love to collect them and the way they get them, which is requesting them from a Discord, board, a Discord bot, it highly defeats the possibility of creating an identity process, an identity structure, because um, those, those pops are handed out like candy without any control. And it's pretty much as if Bright ID allowed and encouraged anyone to connect with anyone without checking any video proof or anything. And, and that kind of defeats our ability of, of promoting us as, a, as an identity standard, but it makes us much stronger on the collectibles space, which is something we still like. We still want POAP to be on the forefront of Ethereum adoption. We like the idea that we have many users that wouldn't have ever used Ethereum if POAP didn't exist. Because at the end of the day, if the technologies we are building make sense, having onboarded people in collectibles has surely been useful still. Maybe someday they get a real bright ID on a proper process. And, and although many POAPs are issued lightly without checking civil attacks or anything, at the same time, every POAP organizer is free to exercise their own control to see who is entitled to a POAP. So for example, on each staker, um, we do make mandatory in some calls to have your video on, otherwise you don't get the POAP. So those data sets are highly reliable and, and allow other parties to consume the data and be sure that the each staker community has been diligent on issuing the token. So, we somewhat um, reduced our focus on identity, but we haven't gave up. We are still working on this. It's just that um, POAP can be useful for so many things because I mentioned collectibles and identity, but there are applications in, in many other spaces, like in the loyalty space, in education spaces, like as an attendance control, in the trading spaces, there are some um, DeFi applications and find useful POAPs for 
uh, tracking DeFi activity and other stuff because at the end of the day they are proofs. So so it's genetics proofs. Um, the current situation is that there are ninety thousand POAPs on both Ethereum mainnet and XDAI, and, and and growing quickly. Um, we are uh, growing the team to be um, more efficient on adapting to new use cases. And, and there are some very nice use cases that we are exploring this day, these days. But before going into that, um, I would like to offer the opportunity for anyone to ask questions related to what I have present. Would it be possible to tie a power up to a bright idea account so they could only be transferred to a wallet that has connected to a bright idea account? Um, I'm not sure if it's technically possible. And even if it is, it sounds something slightly far fetched from our mission. Because for now, we just want to be the base layer for the issuance of proofs. If someone is doing an upper layer and connecting an, a bright ID account to a POAP account or to a single POAP, we would be happy to help. It's something that makes a lot of sense. It would make validating identities much easier because you would harness the power of a bright ID identity and the power of a POAP collection but it doesn't look like something that needs to be on the core protocol. And, and also because of the identity value propositions of POAP, they are so unclear now. Um, I think we shouldn't be thinking on integrations like those this early because it's very likely that at least from the POAP side, things change radically. I, I think Bright Ideas is slightly far ahead on, on its own purpose. So, so it's unlikely that it changes too much. But in the case of POAP, um, I have to admit that we don't have much certainty about how this is going to work in the future. We, we aren't even sure on our path to decentralization. We, don't, we do want to be a decentralized community asset, but it doesn't look like the tooling is, is ready yet. We would like to be community governed, but community governance, uh, open source softwares aren't too advanced. We couldn't use them. They wouldn't work. So, so we don't feel like we are ready for Main Street on, on real integrations. Um, every, we, we, are more, we are much more comfortable working with the collectivers community than, than with the identity community. It's like identity, it, it's too much responsibility. Um, maybe I branch out, but it's something that it's good to cover because it's really representative of our spirit. Um, we rather remain a playful project to, to run experiments on decentralized tech between people than something that grows too serious too soon. And I see there are many more questions. Brandon Benera, I have questions. You mentioned if you started new, you wouldn't use CRC721. Oh, of course, I can, I can explain about this. Um, the ERC721 standard has been created on different times, mainly when um, network state optimization wasn't a priority, meaning that the authors of the standard didn't care at all about what it takes to issue a token. Um, nowadays, issuing a token on, the, on, on any EVM compatible chain, meaning XDAI or, or Ethereum mainnet, it has a cost of more than 200,000 gas units, which is 10 times more than a vanilla Ether transaction. And that's only for storing an ID the images and all the metadata have to be stored elsewhere. And, and that's not reliable because ideally you would just have your token and that would be all the proof you need. But because the way this standard works, because it's been made for crypto kitties and, and you can be sure that back in that day, no crypto kitty holder really cared much about the token existing 50 years. Um, 
So, so uh, problem say ERC-721 standard has. It's extremely gas expensive. It's not highly optimized. It's like a multi-tool that does many things, but doesn't do anything perfectly sharp and right. Um, so so that's, uh, that's another of the issues. Um, it doesn't store the, 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 the standard for data storage. It's quite disappointing. It's disappointing that you are only storing a little piece of data and you're paying a lot for it. And it's not even too much of a nice standard that I'll use because there are many different implementations. So we don't even get the benefit of being a lingua franca that all systems understand because that doesn't happen. Um, different marketplaces, different wallets, different front ends, they all use their own visualization system and you still have to adapt manually. So it's really a poor standard that may have been useful when we didn't have any sort of non-fungible token, but they are a very disappointing solution if you want to do something high quality. Um, um, more advanced standards are like ERC-1155 and, and there are some others, but um, NFTs have so much attraction based network effects, meaning that network effects that have been built because people use them, that now it's too hard to challenge, but to change. But there are some initiatives and, and I do keep the hope that in the future we will see a better standard because if we don't make a better standard, we would be wasting so much resources that, that it could be embarrassing. Um, I'm curious to know if you have ideas for Bright Idea and Pop working directly together, or if you're just recognizing synergies. Um, I think that, that the responsibility um, of seeing such integrations between Bright ID and POAB, it's not of Bright ID nor POAB. I think it has to happen that users that need civil resistance integrate us on their own terms. And this is actually happening. And it's happening, for example, on Gitcoin. And Gitcoin has integrated Bright ID and POAP with little to no help of Bright ID and POAP. And now they are enjoying the benefits of both because they are being able to validate people that have POAPs and they have Bright ID the way around and both. And, and this is working as intended. So not only it's really cool, it does validate the concept that we builders of core protocols shouldn't particularly mess with implementations. Like, like Vitalik Buterin doesn't do anything really to DeFi. DeFi uses Ethereum on their own. So, so that's why I said, I don't think it's our responsibility to, to come with a standard on how to integrate this. I think the way we, we all want this to work, it's permissionlessly. Um, we want to make the technology so good and so accessible that anyone can use it without us having to enable something. Um, if there are... I have a I have a comment on that, Patricio. Yeah. So um, I I see a really interesting um, possible synergy with Poop and Bright ID. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about ways to import external trust into the bright ID graph. And um, one of the things that I thought about early on when I was thinking about the unique identity problem was this kind of concept where, well, if you, if you uh, had a room that had good locks on the doors and you invited people in and you said, okay, on your way out, um, we're going to, uh, we're gonna let everybody in for a certain time limit and then after the time limit passes, you lock the door so no one else can get in. Then on your way out, you, you give everybody uh, this, what would basically be a POAP. You give everybody a POAP on their way out. And that's a proof that, uh, that uh, you just get one of those. Um, and then, but the difficulty is, you know, you can't extend that to the entire population of the world so, at, at once. Um, but that, uh, that's, that's interesting though, because in Bright ID, we're making connections between people, um, but a lot of the algorithms that look at this graph of connections between people, um, you need to start somewhere with some with some trust, some some seated trust in the graph, 
that says, okay, trust starts here, it flows out from here. If an algorithm's looking at the graph, it knows that, okay, this region has more trust in it um, compared to this one. So that someone who's just, you know, making lots of Sybil connections and building up this, this fancy looking graph of their own that's not real, um, the algorithms can look and say, well, this one has more trust. So seeding trust, importing trust into the graph is very important. So back to this example of, of the locked room and the po-ops, um, you mentioned that there's different kinds of po-ops. Some get given out like candy, but if you had if you had a po-op that was that people from the outside could see and recognize that it was uh, a higher quality, um, and it doesn't have to be a large scale that this happens. It could happen many different places on smaller scales, but those types of high quality po-ops can be imported um, into the into the bright ID trust graph and used as seeds. So, so someone that's gotten that, um, it will it will increase their uh, their their trust level. That doesn't mean that they instantly get verified. It doesn't mean that you get verified in Bright ID just by going to one of these. But what it does is it helps your area of the graph um, because it increases your ability to um, move trust through the graph. And um, you, you could think, and, and it's totally, because because uh, the algorithms in Bright ID are decentralized, you can think of this as being um, something that that each algorithm gets to judge how, how they view these POAPs. They can say, okay, well, this one's given out um, 20 times a year and it's not audited very well. So we're, uh, maybe we don't give that one as much, but but this one over here is, is only given out once a year and they do a really good job of, of controlling the, the environment to make sure that it's a really high quality POAP. Um, that one may be, the people who run the algorithms could choose to assign more trust to, to that POAP. But it's, it's up to the individual algorithms who wanna run Bright ID. But I see, the, I see this as um, being, there being potential for some really high quality trust coming into the Bright ID graph through this, um, through through POAPs. And so I that's something I would like to explore. Um, yeah, um, not, not only I'm fully aligned with your vision, I think there are ideas spanning from that concept that you haven't mentioned, maybe because you haven't thought about them, that they are quite powerful. And one of those is that POAP has its main application on in-person events. So it can happen that a collection of 10 POAPs of low quality auditing, it's still strong enough for building a Bright ID connection based on affinity. Because let's say that a person went to 10 different um, sport matches of his favorite team, and although they were low, um, not, not very carefully audited, at least he had to have been present at the place, then maybe he got different POAPs, but at least he was present. And um, a collection of multiple POAPs in a network of multiple peoples creates, creates an interesting overlap of interest, like in social affinity, that can easily spark connections in the Bright ID network that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Let's say that I'm a POAP collector, but I belong to a community that it's not really active in Bright ID because they haven't discovered it yet. And let's say that I want to create the seed group, but I want to expand more than the people I just know in my inner circle. So I could just query the POAP collection network of the events in my area and create connections of low trust levels, but something without having to go through a very long, long, painful discovery process. I could just configure, um, show me people that has affinity that goes to the same church or goes to the same swimming pool in my neighborhood. So I do see endless integration possibilities. I still think that they have to be on upper layers. And this is what you said with the protocols. Anyone can build any of these protocols. and and. This is, this is what makes our technologies nice, that, that this compatibility fact that they call it permissionless innovation. Anyone can come with protocols for, for strengthening 
um, the quality of, of these identities without Bright ID or POAP having any say on them. That, that's how I see them. And I lost track of the questions. I'm sorry, there were too many. Maybe someone wants to pick an interesting one. I think Jorin had a question about uh, the POAPs currently being all on XDAI chain and uh, how, how we could, uh, it, they could be possibly moved uh, to the mainnet. And he was asking about the process that takes place to moving your POAPs to the mainnet. And he was also asking about your plans for uh, maybe other blockchains and having POAPs on other blockchains besides uh, Ethereum. Um, yeah, those are uh, questions that I can answer quickly with a straight, clear answers. Um, we are very happy we moved to XDAI because we lowered the barriers of usage to much nicer grounds. Uh, before moving to XDAI, even before the gas explosion, claiming a POAP had a cost of approximately 120th of a dollar, meaning five cents. And in many communities, that was unaffordable. Like, like even um, where I am from, where I live in Buenos Aires, uh, some people couldn't afford five cents of a dollar to claim a POAP uh, that may not do anything for them. Um, so moving to XDAI and allowing uh, redemptions of POAP for free has really helped the protocol growing in different cultures. Now we have more users in India, we have more cost conscious users, and that's really nice. We are very happy we moved. Um, moving a POAP from XDAI to mainnet, it's really easy. You just go to POAP scan, which is like uh, app.poap.xyz. And there's a big button that says migrate to mainnet. Um, but I personally, for example, only rarely move a pop to mainnet. I, I really trust the XDAI network. Um, of course, it doesn't have the same security guarantees. Like if I had to say which network is going to exist in 50 years, it is very likely that out of the two, Ethereum has higher chances of existing. Um, Intellectually, we are chain agnostic. We want to use the chain that makes the most sense. And so far that chain has been Ethereum and I don't see any of the contenders. When I say Ethereum, it may include EVM compatible chains like XDAI. Um, we don't stress about that. We want to be pragmatic. Um, in the new mobile lab we are working on and, and in our whole ecosystem, we are abstracting the blockchain experience to users that don't care, pretty much like Bright ID is. Like in Bright ID, if you don't care about blockchain tech, you can still be a happy user of the app. But if you are tech savvy, you can still access all the impressive power you get by being a blockchain app. So, so we are pretty much following the same approach and, and Bright ID is kind of an inspiration for us because when you use the iPhone app, it's impossible to tell that it is a blockchain app, except maybe for the waiting times because this is a blockchain app. But um, you, I guess you get my point. Um, there was yeah. a great question about um, who can create a POAP and how would they do that? Like, so mm -hmm. someone wants to distribute that to uh, their viewers or participants at a conference, how would they do that? Um, so currently there's a permissionless website that anyone can access that it's uh, poap.xyc slash admin, like A-D-M-I-N. Uh, uh, Carlos has... Um, uh, gently posted it on the chat. And we do have a challenge there, which is once you have created your POAP, it has to be accepted by us. Because as I said, um, we do, we had made compromises. And some of these compromises is that as long as this experiment is run by us, we don't want to get in trouble with law enforcement. So we don't allow copyright materials on the images. We don't allow IP protected stuff on the descriptions or, or other stuff. We really don't want, if, if you want to use POAP for anything that may get us in trouble because we host the platform, we won't allow it. At the same time, we need to be careful of rogue issuers creating fake POAPs, like someone using the same image and, and metadata of other POAP just trying to trick someone on thinking that something it's a real thing when it's not. So the process is as permissionless as we could make it be on this experimental stage, 
We wish it was completely permissionless like Ethereum. In, in nowadays on Ethereum, um, Vitalik or, or else couldn't stop you from deploying to mainnet. But we still want to run other experiments. And for running these other experiments that we want to run, we need the flexibility of, of having complete control of the front ends and, and middlewares and back ends. So, so I guess that answers the question. Um, if, if who was asking the question, which I think is Anthony Orkey, was just thinking how to use it, you are very welcome to use it. We allow 99.9% .9 of the applicants. We don't reject anyone. Um, as long as you are running events, you are very you are very welcome to use POAP and to reach out to me privately on Discord or Telegram if you have any question. And, and there are many more questions. Uh, there was an interesting question by uh, Alex. I'm reading it. Uh, he says, "If there already is there already a decentralized anon way to issue POAP? We we talked about that, but uh, he, he's talking about the other uh, part that is." Carlos uh, performing today for us. He's sending us a link. There's someone who is uh, sending the links to all the participants. Uh, I, I think uh, he's asking about uh, this part. Is there a way that uh, you have created to do this automatically without someone having uh, to be there and send the links? Um, the answer is yes and no. Um, and, and it's a nice subject to cover. Um, we believe that issuers in POAP are oracles. They are oracles that provide information about whether something happened or not. And most of the time, that thing that may have happened or not, it's someone attending an event. Um, issuers are free to come up with any method for checking whether someone was part of the thing or not. And one of those methods could be an AI, for example. Um, you could have a video camera on the entrance of a physical venue and just set up the video stream and an IAM um, processor to decide who was a human that was there and issue the power. up um, That may sound like futuristic on, on theory. For now, we encourage people to be diligent and and try to have a somewhat reliable procedure, like, like the Bright IDs video calls. Um, the Bright ID video call procedure, it's not valid proof. Um, it can happen that someone, like a very sophisticated actor, manages to sneak some fake identities. But you do your best for making sure that they don't. Um, we do the same approach. Um, we tell issuers that we expect them to do a good job on preventing abuse. And we do score them internally across time. Like if we see that issuers are super responsible and they are, check, they are checking specifically who's who and what do they do, we like that. So we may give them a higher score. So when someone asks us, what's a reliable data set for giving them some sort of benefit or, have, or giving them a higher score in our identity system, we do know who are responsible issuers, who do require video to be on, who, who is aware of this. And those issuers that just use POAP for the collectible value, um, we just put them a score of zero and we say, uh, all these POAPs you better don't use for uh, something that needs your resistance because you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, so I wanna look at the second part of um, Anthony's question, which is, uh, he was talking specifically about um, he's he's organizing anime esports convention and um, what would be the benefits that he could get from using a POAP with his convention. Uh, well, first and foremost, people do people do like to get freebies, and if they attended the conference or the event, it is likely that they care about the matter of the conference, like they likely like anime or this tech. And it's very likely that they are happy with the idea of having a proof that they've been part of that just for their own enjoyment. Like if I open my POAP collection, let's see if I can do that quickly and show it on screen. Um, you will see that I have like 150 POAPs and I just hold them happily for the sake of seeing them in a future time. 
because they are an anchor of a memory of something I've been part of on my own will. Like, um, this is my collection loading. And don't read my email, please. Um, and you may see, for example, this pop up is um, on. You're supposed on to show East... off an East Staker pop up, Patricia. Yeah, and and it was a fun event, and it has the date when it happened and how many people were there. And I'm kind of liking the idea of seeing. It's like when you open your passport and you see the stamps of the places you've been in, and that kicks in memories. This works pretty much the same, but it can be for anything you want. So, so there's, there's value on that. And then there can be additional value because in the case of the anime event, it's an anime, how you pronounce that. Um, it's likely that for those people, it's their first pop up. So you are opening them the world of decentralized tech. And it can happen that they get to discover something that's really worth discovering. Um, I see a similar question by Theresa. Yeah, now he's, uh, now he's asking a follow-up question um, about uh, uh, re re redeeming POAPs later for rewards. Um, is that, uh, how, what's the best way to do that to, if, if if, if you've given out POAPs to your attendees and later maybe you want to um, send them something else. Yes, or... so the usage of POAP as incentives or, or in things like Quest, it is extended. It, it's like a natural evolution of it. What we request to issuers is that if you're issuing a POAP, it is mandatory that that POAP is tied to something that resembles an event. And it doesn't have to be an event like a party. It could be just being visiting a booth on an exhibition, whether it's virtual or in person. It can be an event on its own because you've done something. As long as the power-ups are for actions that, are, that have the format of an event, that's all fine. What it is not allowed, for example, is that you are a YouTube streamer and you want to give a POAP to your audience, and that's like an ongoing POAP, something I give up to you, that doesn't resemble an event because it could have happened any time, any day, in any context. You haven't done anything particularly to get it. So um, we have an article on Medium that I can share any time on, or you can find it on our media channels um, that explains why POAP is not a generalized proof system. We aren't a generalized platform for issuing NFTs. You can't issue proof of picking my nose. It doesn't work like that. It has to be events that start and finish at a time because, because pop-ups otherwise they don't work like memories and, and you need to remember something you've done. Um, that said, uh, the context of quests or, or the other case, Theresa uh, mentioned what was it. Um, um, conference session for participants, that, that totally doable. And, and also we do pop for the community. If what we are do doing is not what the community wants, we will have to pivot. Uh, but for now, the events model seems to be reasonable for those couple cases that don't fit our value proposition. We just tell them, go use Mintbase or, or any other NFT issuing platform and you will be happy um, regardless. Patricia, you asked for like five minutes and it's like- uh, we, we, uh, we are fine as, as, as long yes? as it's okay. that sharp. Um, <laughs> cool. Being able to redeem pop for some sort of reward becomes interesting because pops are transferred, so it's a warranty. Yeah, um, that, that's- Exactly like that, Shoring. Um, we do the technology we use um, has some qualities, and transferability is one of them. Even if we wanted to make the pops untransferable, there are ways to um, to sneak around and, and wrap them. So, so what we propose is that if you are going to reward anyone in based on their pop collections, 
you may want to establish some conditions about um, how long has the pop has to be in the same place. And because someone that is moving a pop up or purchasing a pop or transferring a pop up um, for abusing or for getting a benefit they are not entitled to, cannot do that um, stealthily because everything gets written on the chain. So if you just establish the procedure that if you want to access that benefit, you need to have this pop up and this pop up has to be on the original address it was claimed, or at least it has to be have been sitting there for more than a month, or let's say the amount of time that the reward wasn't even being planned. So, so you can ensure that nobody anticipated it. That gives you the same benefit as if they were non-transferable because we still need to give the people to move POAPs if they are migrating devices or to get rid of a POAP if they don't want to have it. We, we, don't, we don't have, we, we can't charge what people do with their NFTs. They can do whatever they want with them. Um, it's just that um, if you are given a benefit based on a POAP, uh, you better be careful about how you do it and establish processes for it to not be abused. Pretty much the same if you're giving a benefit for a bright ID um, um, identity. If you're giving a real important real world benefit, it's likely that if you don't establish good filters, you will get fake IDs because as long as the incentive is worth the cost of creating an ID, it's going to be abused. And creating a bright ID ID, it's not too expensive as creating a fake pop-up collection, it's not too expensive either. So, so a scientist, I talked to many about this, call this an arms race, where the better the reward, the higher the incentive for the attack. And it seems to be a moving target. Um, I, I, they are quite skeptical. I do think with combinations between POA, Bright ID, and maybe some other tech, you can really eliminate abuse to a very high degree. Like, like you can assure that maybe 99.99% of the redeemers of the benefit are legit. And maybe there might be some advanced persistent threat, but um, as, as you require higher guarantees, building a non-legit bright ID identity or pop collection gets so expensive that it's likely that nobody can realistically achieve it. Yeah, I agree with that. I also think that there's a trade-off because some, some applications may just want a, a quick and easy process for their users to um, you know, get verified and they don't need a very high verification level. And that's what, that's what we're seeing mostly right now as the Bright ID graph is going, growing. But I think that um, we definitely see some projects on the horizon that are going to require um, more stringent uh, um, verifications for their uh, to to get what they're offering, and that may mean that it it takes more work for the for the participants to achieve that bright ID verification. But uh, it's a, a different a different kind of verification than just coming yes, to a but, connection but party. It's, it is the same in the real world, like getting yeah, exactly. uh, security clearance. Um, uh, I, may, I, I can't explain exactly what a security clearance is because I don't even know myself personally, but there are some things that require more work to prove that you are worthy. Um, if there are any question that I haven't answered and you, you have really two minutes but for just... an answer, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to keep following this conversation. I am active in the Bright ID community. Um, with the eight staker guys, we were granted the seed condition in our accounts. So, so I am around. Um, I love to discuss this kind of stuff. Um, I'm almost always online helping people being on board into power up. I'm always looking for newer integrations. If someone, on one hand, I said, um, it's not up to us protocol developers to work on integrations, but I do work on integration on a personal capacity. So if someone has any integration idea between Bright ID and POP, I would be very happy to explore it and, and maybe even 
um, spare some resources to it. Um, I, I decide I, I, I'm, I'm not a visitor on this community call. I'm a member of this community. Yeah, we love or, that. Uh, Patricio love having you. Would, would, would leave because I know he, he, is, he has another call. Uh, and I wanted to say this on your back, behind your back, but now you're here. I have never seen a better attitude from anyone in the Ethereum ecosystem ever. You need anything from Poop or Patricio, you're getting a response like that. I, I was just worried that we wouldn't get this like Poop within an hour. And I, the response was with the links. It's that fast. It's that easy. It's that convenient dealing with Poops, getting the Poops. Uh, the Patricio and uh, the, the, his team are super friendly, super responsive. And yeah, we're, we're so happy that we're working together on this ecosystem. Uh, he That's always says that we are working on the same project. Super friendly, super responsive, super fizz. It was. I, 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 uh, yes, sort of, I, I missed I that part, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, I, I feel the, I feel every person that wants to do something with POAP is an emergency to me. Yeah, well, let's make sure that Patricio gets the proper thanks. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for yes. your presentation. I I loved it. I'm sure other people loved loved Thank it you. too. Yes, we awesome. And, and really this, this, this I, is this is one of my favorites. I, I stay around and, and of course collect your POAP from Carlos because yes, when exactly. the zoom closes, uh, the chat goes poof. <laughs> yes. I hope no one has missed that, yeah. Well, ho uh, hope you guys have liked it. I have uh, sure. something to say, guys, if you can let me a bit. Is that okay? Huh? Okay, guys, I, I love the conversation, uh, but I can see there's some kind, is there's no, some kind of not very flexible here. I, my idea, I think it, it, we should, you know, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, you should let people also uh, participate. Some people, they need power up to sell, okay, in the future. Uh, for, for example, instead of uh, uh, selling shares, uh, okay, like uh, the, the traditional shares, maybe, okay, I have a project. Anyone who can buy the power ups now, later I return to them with uh, 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 the incentives they they need, but this power is uh, like uh, I know I know who they are. I, I trust someone else can answer that. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks again, Patricio. Yes, Patricio. Yes, sorry, yeah, I, I was yeah. Thank you for coming, Patricio. Yeah, I, but uh, uh, Bander, you you could uh, I I think. Uh, Continue with your question. I think Superfiz and uh, Adam would, would be able to respond. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I think you know if you understand my question, or I repeat, guys. Yeah. Well, so you were asking about the potential for selling PO apps um, or using them for financial gain. Um, so, as a permissionless architecture under ERC seven twenty one. Um, you have the potential to sell those. They are for sale now on OpenSea. Um, and uh, Patricio's philosophy would be that he doesn't, he doesn't have the power to forbid something that is allowed by the protocol. So um, if, if a protocol um, enables uh, tokens to be deployed to one address and, and not able to be transferred after that, then he would definitely endorse that. But because ERC-721 allows for selling, uh, then, he, then while it's it's not his goal for the platform, he won't openly discourage it because it's a permissionless platform, and you're going to do whatever you want anyway. I don't know so, what what I mean. What I mean now. What I mean like now, instead of like having traditional shares, you know the world is very big and huge. You know, it's like it's very the traditional way. It has to have the give me your address, give me this, I send you that. It's, but it's like I give power up to all those who will donate or invest invest on a, on a certain project. So in a promise, after I will return to them with uh, with incentives, with uh, uh, return, with uh, different uh, uh, you know um, motivations like uh, 
um, like tickets, uh, flights, or anything like you know, everyone according to what they. But the badge will be on the logo of the company, so it is it is something to deal with the company. It's like shares, but it is not required to for them to send their names or anything. Just pop up is a kind of recognizing them and sending them. That is what I need, and actually it is uh, very you know it will help my project a lot in a way because you know there is there is a way to you know we we ha I have to say thank you to everyone if if my project if I launch my project and it's been successful I have to find a way to say thank you to those people who donate okay. who do this so this is a kind of what I need it for so I'm not selling it but I am building a project and giving people what they deserve of what uh, they already donate or invest if you know what I mean Sure, and, and that would be acceptable. We we recognize that POAP is going to be harvested for airdrops in the future. Um, that that's something that we know is taking place. It's it's not even contrary to the ethos because those people are participants. Uh, they're participants in your organization or whatever way. As long as there's civil resistance measures to make sure that um, the people who are receiving them are known participants. Uh, and it sounds like in your case they are, uh, then it would fit perfectly with uh, with. Poet. Okay, uh, then the next thing that we agreed on that, and I'm happy for this, because I before I wasn't uh, sure if that's acceptable or not, because I'm new, guys. So forgive me for this. I shouldn't even you know, take your time with that. Uh, but uh, another thing now, how I do it? I just did the form. Okay, I'm not sure when and how I can uh, uh, distribute this to the donator because some people are already already donated. Uh, and some of them not. And is there a way as well to to distinguish between who donated more than the other, or it has to be like one for all everyone? Yeah. So uh, as ERC C721, they are indistinguishable from each other. So every POAP is equal for an event. Uh, so everyone who receives this Bright Idea Community Call will have the exact same POAP. They're not distinguishable beyond that. They do have unique IDs. But when you pass out a claim code you cannot know which participant claims that code um, or will have that, that POEP assigned to them. Um, okay, but how I can send it to each one? Is there yes. something I can, a, a yes. platform, I can just send it to? Uh... Well, so, and this might be something you want to follow up with, Patricio, that uh, when you complete the form at app.poep.xyz slash admin. I did, I did, I did. Okay. I just did. Then you'll receive an email um, and you'll have an event number. And then as as Patricio said, there's a single point of, of control. You'll message Patricio and say, I'm interested in receiving 100 or 150 claim events or claim codes for this event. And then he'll send you a text file that has all of those claim codes. Um, you can then program them into a website or a bot to distribute them, or you can distribute them manually. Okay, and if uh, now I don't have uh, certain numbers, like people who are there donating, they're donating in different dates. So the project is, is already open, but there is no like one time event. It is like from this date up to um, I didn't like put I did I did end, you know, so they can because the project is big and uh, everyone just donate. Okay, just send it to their wallet, the same wallet they already donate with. Yes, that's right. Mm, so it is okay. Uh, there's no any certain date uh, it should be. Well, the so when you set up the event, it gives you the option to specify a date range. For example, um, ETH Staker gives out a challenge coin, um, and it is a for anyone who has made significant con contributions to our community within the the year 2021. We send them a link for the challenge coin. That event lasts one year, and uh, anybody who con contributes to our uh, community within that year gets that POAP. So yes, it is okay for it to be a range of dates. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know we are uh, over time, but since Superfiz is here, I want to ask uh, two more uh, practical questions before I stop recording and we have a connection party pretty quickly. Uh, the, the, in the gallery for, for each POAP, there was a power. Uh, the, the signaling the, uh, the the number of co-ops that uh, recipients have uh, together. Uh, 
why does that matter? How, how are we uh, going to, what's the plan for the power of each POA? Uh, well, this is, so POA power was, is, is one of my babies. Um, when we conceptualized it, uh, the plan was that um, each POEP would have a weight relative to its value, um, sort of what Patricio mentioned earlier, that, um, you know, Bright ID as being a, um, a highly civil resistant POEP, we know exactly who came here, we know that they're valid recipients, uh, it would have a higher weight. And so POEP power is not as it's calculated here because it wasn't implemented as we, as we had planned it, um, POAP power will eventually be the sum um, or the average of all of the holders' um, wallets for that POAP. So if there are 160 people in this event um, and each POAP has a relative weight, then uh, we would take the sum of those, divide them by the number of people who come, and it would tell us the, the weight of, the, of that POAP wallet. Ah, difficult to explaining it. Um, it's it's basically a, a tool to determine the value of each POAP and then the, the value of each POAP wallet. As it's calculated here, it is simply the number of POAPs in each wallet to tell you how many events someone has been to. But it's it's a poor measure as it stands. I see your point there. I, I, I see what, what you're getting at. But yeah, as, as you said, it's kind of hard to yeah, but <laughs> I, I have notes for it and it's simple when I when I'm you know when it's on the tip of my tongue but uh, it's it's really just the goal of um, of of indicating how how much weight and value each POAP and each POAP wallet has uh, as in mm -hmm. it, it's similar to uh, bright ID like how how verified are you how real how how confident are we that you're a real person I see. So it, it, it might be a part of co-op that is uh, the, the more uh, leaned over uh, uniqueness and how, how we want to determine uniqueness of losing uh, of each person or each wallet uh, belonging to a person. Uh, I have some more questions and I'm sure others have lots of questions and lots of uh, the suggestions, but uh, I want to thank everyone for, for being here. And uh, I want to stop recording uh, in a minute because I want to uh, end this call and uh, community call with a connection party together so we can make a group connection and reconnect with each other or make connections to people who are new here. Maybe during that we can ask uh, some more questions. So I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.